right, yes, off I go. Tell that to this old bag. Right to the right honorable Dr. Marjorie Bowen. Was secondary estate for Northern Ireland. Was residing at Hillsborough Castle in Hillsborough County down Northern Ireland. And of course, the United Kingdom. Right, dear Mo, I am writing to you today to express my utter disgust at the way the honest and decent loyalist people of Northern Ireland and their elected representatives, particularly me, have been treated by you and that grinning monkey Tony Blair. Ever since you and that bunch of pingo commie Nancy boys were elected to government, you have sought to pour scorn on the loyalist people of Ulster uh, at every opportunity. First, you dream up this nonsense of the Good Friday Peace Agreement that's nothing more than a sellout to the good people of this province. Well, let me tell you about the Good Friday Agreement. I wouldn't wipe a fucking arse with it. And now you want to disband the Royal Ulster Constabulary and replace it with a bunch of lachos with balaclavas and hurly sticks. And we all know what that means. The new police force will not be able to go down the Arbor Road and knock the shite out of Jared Rice and the rest of his fiendin' mates. No, they'll all be sitting around talking in Irish and playing the boring. I'm sitting here writing this letter in the company of Constable Mervyn McFall, who has been my loyal bodyguard for the last 15 years. Isn't that right, Mervyn? Yes, that's right, Dr. Paisley. So, what's Mervyn going to do? That's what I want to know. Who's going to pay his overtime and lunch allowance under this new regime? How's Mervyn going to be able to change his car every year and pay his subscription to Sky Television? And who's going to pay uh, for his three foreign holidays? Uh, and how is he going to be able to afford the vet bills for his daughter's ponies? Tell me that, Mrs. Bullock. Let me tell you this. Enough is enough. The only peace agreement that this province will have is when all the Finians fuck off out of here and give us all peace. They can all go down to the Republic of Ireland and live with Bertie and his cronies. See how they like that? Yes. Let them try to live down there uh, with the price of houses the way they are. And worse, quality bus corridors springing up all over the fucking place. They'll not be able to drive into sign on the door, for goodness sake. No jarrows on a Thursday. And there'll be no housing executive to build them uh, all them fancy red brick three bedroom houses in Dublin. No, they'll be lucky to live in swords. No, make that drug at her. That'll teach them. Uh, 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 and another thing, on behalf of the Protestant people of Ulster, I would like to reiterate my opposition to the fact that that fat shite John Hume an old red-faced beetroot bake David Trimble got the Nobel Peace Prize and I got absolutely nothing. If it wasn't bad enough to give that curly-haired bollocks Heaney a prize for writing a few old poems that didn't even fucking rhyme, full of old shite about bugs and shovels, you have to add insult to injury by nominating Hume and Trimble uh, the dirty traitor for the Nobel Peace Prize also. And what have I got? Fuck all. And here's me uh, having given a lifetime's work to the cause of Ulster. And all I have received is insults and humiliations. Oh, and some old stupid doctorate from a bunch of fucking American rednecks. Well, I think it's high time that my work was recognized. There must be some honor I can have. How about the Nobel Prize for bigotry or shipstern or something like that? Anything for fuck's sake. I can't bear the thought of all my political enemies getting one over me. So I am asking you today to use your new job in the cabinet office uh, to redress this blatant injustice and recognize my contribution to the political life of Northern Ireland. Because there's no use asking that poofter Peter Madison. Feeling that, you can go and shite.
yours, Dr. Ian Kyle Paisley. Okay, Mervyn, print that off and just put it in an envelope and post it, would you? And make sure you put urgent on it. Okay, Dr. Paisley, I'll do that now and drop it off at the post box. Do you want anything from the shops when I'm out? Uh, yes, uh, let me see. Uh, yes, get us one of those magnums, would you? Uh, the almond one, Mervyn, yes, get me one of those. And, uh, of course, get me one of those new chunky Kit Kats. Will do, Dr. Paisley. Blue 6 to control. Leaving static post at 1640 for drop-off point in white sector. Roger, overnight. Oh, for fuck's sake, Mervyn, I keep telling you there's a ceasefire. Jerry and the boys are too busy planning to be government ministers to be bothered by you anymore, for goodness sake. Well, you can never be too sure, Dr. Pusey. I haven't gone away, you know. Dr. Pusey, here's a letter for you. I think it's from Mo. Give us that. Let's see what it's got to say. All right. This was no fucking wires hanging from it. Oh, I see. She's invited me to London uh, for a meeting. Very, very good. I look forward to that. Thanks, Mervyn. Dr. Molan will see you now, Mr. Paisley. Out of my fucking time, too, for goodness sake. Oh, hello, and It's very, very nice to see you. Mm. Oh, it's so lovely to get a kiss from a, a clean-shaven man. I keep telling Jerry Adams he should shave, you know. His beard's forever tickling my ass. <laughs> okay, okay, enough of that dirty talk, Mo. We're here on a serious matter, as you know. Oh, sorry, and now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, I totally disagree with the sentiments in your letter. Uh, firstly, Seamus Heaney is a fine poet, and in fact his book Death of a Naturalist is a seminal work of the Irish poetic canon. Fuck, Heaney, what about my Nobel Peace Prize, Mo? Well, I'm really, really sorry, Ian, but uh, you know as well as I do that uh, your name is a byword across the field for hatred and bigotry, and uh, the Nobel Committee couldn't, in all honesty, uh, award you uh, a peace prize. Uh, it would be uh, just totally uh, undermine the prize altogether by giving a bigot like yourself the award. Well, well, let, let me say this here. It's only the Finians I hate. I get uh, uh, on OK with the rest of the world. Well, I'm afraid, Dr. Paisley, that's just not good enough. Uh, the Nobel Prize is only awarded to those people who have made a conspicuous public effort to uh, affect peace and reconciliation with their former enemies. And uh, let's be honest, Dane, uh, there are no signs of you qualifying. So what do I have to do more then to be considered? Well, for a start, Mr. Paisley, I think you should uh, put aside your old ways and... Uh, show the international community that you have changed and that you have embarked upon the road to peace and reconciliation. Uh, I think it's a good start. Uh, it would be a really good start to, to go and live in the south of Ireland and, and show that you can mix with the people from another tradition. Jesus, Mo, you must be joking. I could never live in the south. Sure, have you seen the price of houses there? You could just get the digs for a week, Mr. Pacey. No way, forget about it. I'll just do without the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, I don't know why I've changed my mind. Making out of this dirty Dublin. For Christ's sake, Marvin, hurry up or I'll miss this bloody train. What the fuck are you doing? Just checking out the platform area, Dr. Paisley. You know the station is located in a hostile interface area? Never mind that, never mind that, goodness sake, man. Have you packed everything? Oh yes, we've got the clothes, a few extra shirts, long johns, socks. Oh yes, and uh, the hot water bottle. Uh, those free stealers don't bother too much with central heating, you know. Oh, and Eileen's packed a few soda fires in case we get hungry on the way down. And there's a packet of condoms, or sorry, th there's eggs and onion sandwiches for you, and a steak sausage for me. Have you packed the good book, Marvin? That's what I want to know. Oh yes, the one about Charlie. 
For fuck's sake, Mervyn, you buck idiot. Don't let anyone see you with that. I was going to take it over to Kinsale to see if Charlie would autograph it for me. <laughs> I meant the Bible. I need to read the scriptures to steady my nerves, you know. Dear Lord, before I embark on this momentous journey to a heathen land, I remember your servant Moses, whom you dispatched into a barren wilderness to lead his people to the promised land. Think of me, your humble servant, as I too embark on a perilous journey to a land wrecked by pestilence, to a land disfigured by address and vanity, by plague and flood, Moriarty and McCracken, designated area apartments, abracadabra and cabals, Dumphy and Chips. Lord, grant me the wisdom to stay on the path of righteousness. And if I should stumble along the way, grant me the foresight to pick a good solicitor from the golden pages to sue the corpo. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right, Mervyn, we should be on our way. And those friggin' free staters driving this train to bother their hearts to get going. Dr. Paisley, Dr. Paisley, hey, Dr. Paisley. Ah, oh, fuck me, I don't believe it. It's Willie McCray. Who the fuck told him I was going to Dublin? Well, it wasn't me. Well, Dr. Paisley, thank the Lord I caught up with you. I thought I was going to miss the train. I took the wrong road coming out of Macrofelt this morning and ended up in cold rain. Thought I was never going to get here in time. I was doing 60 all the way here. Well, what the fuck is it, Willie? The train's about to go. Well, I heard you were going to Dublin and I was wondering if you could take my new LP along and see if any of the DJs on the radio stations would play a few songs on air. I've written some of them with the free state in mind. Well, Willie, if you think I'm going to fucking trips around Dublin with another load of your old gospel ramblings, you've another thing coming. No, Dr. Paisley, they're not all gospel. Some of them are aimed for the teenage market. A bit of hip-hop and that. Well, listen, Willie, hip-hop the fuck out of here before this train goes. I'll see what I can do, but I'm not promising you anything. Oh, thanks, Dr. Paisley. God is good. God is good. God's a friggin' piss taker, if you ask me. Just that's all I need. Hawking Willie's songs around radio stations. Anyway, we're off at least. That's something. Here, Mervyn, give us some of those soda files. Hi, Ian. Hi, Mervyn. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing here, Jerry? Well, Ian, I was going to ask you the same thing. You're not going to Dublin by any chance, are you? Well, what am I am? What's it got to do with you, beardy buck? Well, there's a turn up for the books there, I'll tell you that. Actually, I was speaking to Mo, and she told me that you were going to Dublin to try and win the Nobel Peace Prize. Is that right? Go and fuck yourself, Jerry. No, seriously, Ian. I could give you a hand. In fact, we might be able to do a double act. If human trouble can win jointly, why can't you and I? Oh, pull the other one, would you, Jerry? There's bells on it. No, sure. You know nothing about double, other side. Tell me that. What do you know about it? I've been coming down here for years. In fact, I've got a house down there. How the fuck did you afford that? No, I bought it years ago. When you could pay off your mortgage with your dull money. I've got jail residency now. Come in handy for the old uh, telecom chair. So how many did you get, BLC, Bob? Oh, that would be telling. In fact, I did nicely. Huh? Before they fell in price. Made a few, Bob. When's he going to afford to eat and Julie's nine again? Anyway, I ain't going up there to have a word with Bertie. Have to sort out a few things, you know, me and Martin. Here he is now. Hi, Ian. Hi, Mervyn. Fuck off, Garfunkel. Well, Mervyn. That's a nice new car you have. Two litre. Nice alloys. I must have that run you. Don't tell him, Mervyn. He's just trying to wind you up, so he is. Look, you'll have to sell it, Mervyn, when you lose your job. <laughs> I know I know a fellow up in the falls who could give you a good price for it. Cash too. Unless you want to join the guards, that is. 
I'll put a good word in for you if you want. Have you got a spare soda there then? I love those steak sausages. Can hardly get them anywhere these days. See you, lads. Here, Martin. I was still on for a pizza tonight. We can go back now, place in Temple Bar. Great pepperoni. Jesus, no, I can't have any pepperoni. Repeat on me something shocking. I'd be up all night with the bacon soda. No, I'll just have to have the old tomato and the mozzarella. Hey, Martin, have you any fertilizer? My dad's having awful trouble with his cabbages. Marvin, take it easy, son. Or you'll be finding fertilizer in the boot of your fucking car. Right, Marvin. We're nearly in Dublin now. So make sure you don't leave anything behind you and let's get off this bloody train without those two Sinn Féin bollocks of saying us. I don't want them to know uh, Bertie's weakness. I hope he's laying on a feet for us because I'm fucking starving. Any more of those soda fires? Sorry, Dr. Paisley. We've hit them all. Oh, yes, what a journey. Well, thanks for meeting me off the train, Bertie. Ah, ah welcome to the South End, and we're, we're delighted to... Uh, never mind that. Who the fuck's burning my church up? Tell me who's responsible for it. Ah, oh, no, that's uh, nothing to do with me. Uh, and I tell you what, I have my best man on the case, and uh, that's P. Flynn, of course, who's just uh, uh, came back from Brussels. Uh, but here, and I'm sorry, but I have to rush because I have a cabinet meeting, you know, and... Uh, but here, do me a favour, I've a, a, a young lass who's looking for a fella, and uh, I think their son, Ian Junior, would uh, 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 fit the bill very nicely. Uh, uh, and here's her number. Oh, well, I don't know about that, Bertie. My son makes a good orange Protestant blood into a, the witch of a Republican. I don't know about that. But then, I suppose, like I said earlier, there's no harm in stabbing the enemy with a sword. Yes, give me that number. All right, so uh, what what I want you to do, Ian, is uh, come out of the bar and uh, uh, take a turn to the right, uh, uh, down uh, the ramp, and the taxi driver there will, will, will show you all around, and uh, hopefully I'll see you later. Right, that's all right, Bertie. Thanks again for meeting us, uh, and I'll see you later on. Excuse me, sir. Is this taxi free or what? It is, my good man. I wouldn't be on the rank if I wasn't free. All right, don't be getting let me for goodness sake. Just give us a wee scoot in around the town. I want to see what changes there's been down here in the south. I'm sure there's been a brave few from the last time I was down here to rescue my friend, Peter the Pump Robinson. Oh, here, by the way, Mervyn, put those bags in the back. Not the wife, the bags. Plank. Yes, let's, let's go and have a wee scooter around the time. Uh, Fred, is there any chance of getting a, a, a important a, a Toyota Avensis? Any chance of getting a... I look, hold on a second, Mervyn. The man hasn't even stepped off the fucking mark yet, and you're at him to get an imported car. Never mind him, Fred. Let's get going. Let's take a wee tour. Right. On the right-hand side here, we have the four courts. The four courts, Where the famous right. Michael Collins fought the battle. Who's that Collins one, Mervyn? Oh, I think he's the boxer. Steve Collins. No, oh, you fucking agent. What's his name? Michael, is it? That's the very man, Michael yes, Collins. Yes, Michael Collins, yes. Well, don't know about him being that famous up in the north. He certainly is up in the south. But uh, talking about the four courts, with the amount of hoods as politicians... That you have down there, you need more than four courts. You need 40 courts for Charlie Hockney alone, the gun runner himself. There's plenty of those down here. Oh, yes, sir. Brown envelope jobs for all the politicians down here. Well, when we get brown envelopes up on the north and there's cables hanging from them, I normally get the wife to open the meal. I say, right, highly <laughs> open that up there. <laughs> no, we don't do that. No, I don't get stuff like that. Uh, just make sure you take it easy, Fred. I'm very... Uh, uh, susceptible to being sick. <laughs> Especially when I see Mo Mullum or Tony Blair on the screen. So where are we now? Where are oh, you we're coming down you? along the keys now. Right. Just on your right hand side over there. It's very nice. 
you have City Hall on one side and behind that again you have Dublin Castle. I'm sure you've heard of Dublin yes, Castle. Yes, I many a time I have spat at it. Yes, oh, I've been at uh, Dublin Castle. Yes. A bit uh, as equivalent to our Stormite. Only Stormite is more glorious, I have to say. And what about uh, uh, O'Connell Street Freight? Well, we'll be just coming down to, to that. Now, we'll take the right turn here. We'll be just at O'Connell Street. Yeah, so that's where the ladies of the night hang out. Oh, that's for sure. I bet you there's more than that hanging out at about 12 o'clock at night. Oh, without a doubt, my man. Yeah, without a well, doubt. I think I'll be back down here myself to see if I can get uh, <laughs> latch on the one islands in Belfast. So you might as well make hay while the sun shines. Now on the right hand side here on O'Connor Street we have the GPO, which is the General Post yes, Office. that's where Jerry Adams goes and gets his Jarrow Cash, isn't that right? That's correct. Yes, and of course, Bertie Ahern, they're all at their work. And Charlie Hawking. Yes. Now what about uh, the nightlife? What's that like? Oh, it's very, very good here. Exceptionally good nightlife. In around the Temple Bar area and that. Oh, well, you know, uh, you know yourself that I wouldn't drink in any bars, uh, Freddy. I'm a, a teetotaler, totally against all that devil's buttermilk. Now, Bourbon, he would have a drink. Bourbon, a good drinker, he is. Well, there's nothing wrong with having the other oil pint again, us, Mr. Pusey. You know, well, certainly not in front of me. Of course, you're going to slap the fucking mouth. Uh, I'll not be tolerating any of that. You hope you don't touch that devil's butter on yourself, friend. Oh, no, 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 no. Are you saved? No, it's heat holder. Uh, for the Pat Jennings couldn't that. save you, son, isn't that right? That's correct. Yes, yeah, so Packy Bonner, as I would say. Now, what about these, uh, all this traffic that's down here on this side? Ah, uh, it's unbelievable. It's terrible, the amount Every of cars. day, 24 hours a day, non stop, bumper to bumper. And then there, the, you have these traffic wardens. Oh, them sure the bosses. Yes, they're clapping everybody. That's for sure. And I tell you what, all I have to say is to all, all of those traffic wardens, you're a sure of bastards. That's all I have to say to them. It's... I don't often agree with you, but I agree with you on that. Well, I don't see why you would disagree with me, because I obviously am a minister and I'm an honest man. I've been telling the truth for 40 years. Watch that fucking car, for God's sake, friend. There you go, off. How long have you been driving? Oh, 25 years. Don't stop the look of things in there on that fucking car there. But anyhow, it's not a very nice day, is it? The old grey skies of the Republic. Ah, uh, that's because you come down here. Normally sunshine because... Oh, well, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's, uh, Bertie Ahern and all the rest and talking all the shite of the day. That's why you've got the grey mists of the Republic. And, of course, I don't mind actually exchanging the blue skies of Ulster for the grey mists of the Republic. So what do you think yourself, getting uh, political here? Do you think we're going to have this United Ireland? Oh, I'd say eventually down the road it will come. There's Over no my dead fucking body, Freddy. Oh, should we all know that? Certainly not what happened in my day, I'll tell you that. That's why we'd have to get rid of you first. Well, you'll have, have a United long... Ireland. You'll, have, you'll get a foot in the bollocks. You'll have a long wait. Another 30 or 40 years and this old dog yet. Yes. Should knock that man down. One less for mass. Well, we're coming up now to Leinster House, where the Irish government sit. Ah, uh, that's all they do, they sit and they do fuck all. Scratching their arses. That other Podgers to Rasa, Jerry Adams lookalike. The dirty birdie. Yes. And I have to also say, Freddy, the last time, uh, uh, that I was tied in the south. Uh, look at the cars that were driving then, they were all crackers, bones of scrap. Ah, uh, well, I could agree with you there, but we brought in this old fucking scrappage scheme. Two thousand pounds on a car, and you, you can now get a new car with your trade in of two thousand pounds scrappage deal. Scrappage? Well, when we say scrappage back where I come from, it's normally four fellas knocking the fuck out of each other out of some pub. But, uh, well, I see they've got decent cars on the road for a change. I'm glad to see that. 
don't know about the drivers. The cars are all right. But that's a terrible price to be charging per mile. That's not. That's. We'll be charging you double when you get out. I don't think so, son. There'll be a parcel in the back of your fucking boot. You're getting the staring off you. Well, let me tell you something. I would never burn holes in my pockets put pumps inside them. There's always the good, loyal Ulster, Her Majesty, and whatever else on the back of my notes. There's nothing wrong with you taking the punts and all your churches up around Monaghan and that. What's well, so hey, let me tell you this. Here's some bastard is ha having a concerted effort to burn my churches out. Somebody is uh, setting a light to my free Presbyterian church. And it's a disgrace. It's sacrilegious. It's blasphemous. Burning my churches. I hope you don't agree with that. I don't agree with it, but what you're saying is wrong. You take the Yorish town from this side of the bar and then you come and you wouldn't put it in your pocket. Well, you're putting it in the bank, aren't you? No, I'm not worried about the Irish pound. I'm talking about my church. My church is more important than pounds, pumps, or anything else you want to talk about. I would like to know who's burning out my churches, trying to rid the Ulster Protestant side of the south. Well, there's very few of them left here now. Well, I know that. We got rid of most of them anyway. I'll tell you what, there's very few of them left in the north as well because of Adams and fucking Artie Funkle McGinnis trying to push us out. It's not going to work. Why didn't you take a, a stand on the, the peace process? As far as I'm concerned, I never got involved in the talks because they're a sellout to Ulster. You just don't understand that. You just don't care, that's what it is. What the arse of that. Lovely arse. Beautiful set of rests. Oh, Dr. Page, I just want to ask you one thing. Prices of houses... Just call me Ian, friend. Ian? Yes. Okay, my man. How's prices in the north compared to the south? What do you think of those? Well, I, I, I think the houses in the north uh, are, are very good value. Better than the slums I've seen up here in the south. Uh, some of the houses up in the north are around about 100,000 pounds. Uh, that's for the average house. Uh, I don't know what you're paying for your slums down here, but uh, I'm sure it's nowhere near 100,000 pounds. What sort of money are you paying? Look at that fucking motorbike. Reckless bastard. Uh, Fred, just pulling at those boogies here. I want to go in and do a bet, so I do. Have you got a few winners today? Oh, well, I've got a couple of tips. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a tenner on whatever Jim McDade's on, I'll tell you that. Well, the only thing now about this little boogie here is a staunch Catholic. I didn't think you'd like to, to win there. Well, think... nothing would give me more greater pleasure than to take the money of a good finger. I'll tell you better than that. But I'm in this bookmakers. I really am going to bet on there's not going to be a night in Ireland. You reckon? Yes. Just pull in here, Fred. This will do all right. Do you want the horse done or what? Ah, here. Put a fiver on him. Oh, yes. That's it. Uh, my bet's done now. Happy days. Going home a rich man, I hope. Tell you what, Fred. Is there any more of these uh, Calimore restaurants about here? I'm on. Ah, oh, yeah. yes. Yes, one just... Ten yards up the road here. Yes, like, sir. Like to pull in and yes, I think my calling is something in that bastard birdie wouldn't ask if you had a mouth on you. Oh, by the way, Fred, you don't have any Paris pubs down here? Oh, indeed you have. Indeed you have. Let you them in there. Oh, yes. Just sir. stop here now. Here's the coil mower now. Oh, Red that's lovely. Very nice indeed, yes. Well, normally down in the north, they normally get the taxi driver to open the door for the politician, but since we're down in a fucking alienated country, we might as well open the door ourselves. You can stop now, or do you want me to fucking jump out while we're still going, Fred? We'll probably shoot in the back if you want. Ah, right. Swift kick in the balls you'll get. But anyway, what do you owe you anyway, son? Ah, uh, eight pound. What about pumps? I'll give us sterling. Well, take it out of that. In fact, keep the change. All the best. Chucky our laugh. All the best, my man. Good luck. Alright, come on, Marvin. Get those fucking bags out. Yes, he bastard. Right, I'm doing it now, Doctor. Get, come on. All the best, Fred. Good luck, my man.
Lovely peaches, nectarines, bananas, lovely tomatoes, 50 pence for two me pounds. Excuse me a second, is this where you get the tomorrow? Uh, no, mister, that's down the road. I'm just selling the fruit here. Do you want um, we've lovely nectarines, oranges, bananas? Oh, no, sure, I'll be fucking rotten by the time I get back to Belfast. No, I want some tomorrow for the wife. I need the missus. Your face looks awful familiar. I know you. Don't tell me. I know you. Jesus, I do. Of course, you're that old orange bastard Ian Paisley, aren't you? Here, less of the oil, if you don't mind. Here, Dr. Paisley. You won't believe this, but my young fella was doing a project at school on the north, and he picked you to do a study on. Oh, that's very interesting. How did he get on with it? Ah, uh, uh, well, he never got finishing it, because he's in Lachlan House at the moment. Uh, him and some of his mates took a car belonging to a Fianna Fáil councillor. Well, what did they charge him with? Misappropriation of a building contractor's property. Well, I bet that car had a bit of poke in it. Them boys wouldn't have had anything they bought with the scrappage. I hope that rat that ran a fucking lamppost. Well, no, uh, actually, they stalled the car at the lights of Fairview, and then the guards got them. Anyway, where the fuck's that tomorrow? Over here now have the lovely tomatoes, only 50 pence for two pounds, lovely nectarines, oranges, bananas, pineapples. Hi there, Ian. How are you getting on? What the fuck are you doing down here, Jerry? Are you following me around? For Christ's sake, Ian, now calm yourself down. Don't be so paranoid. I'm just going down to Dunn's and the Alex Centre to get a few jumpers. You get a great range here, and that, of course, is a good rate against the punt. Oh, yeah. The Armalite in one hand and Dunn's jumper on the other. Bit of a woolly revolutionary, aren't you, Jerry? Hey, mister. Don't I know you? And you, that fella that sausage libelled and got all the money for the, from the Sunday Indo and then bought himself a BMW. Crunchy is the Rossa, yeah. Hey, don't be getting me mixed up, that sticky bastard. Right, calm down, Jerry. I won't get your jumpers. Oh, here, lads, 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 before you go, could you tell us something about the North that I'm dying to know? What's the state of the house prices up there? Because they're shocking down here. Do you know, I know a fella who went to the post office to cash his welfare, and by the time he got back, the house next door was worth an extra thousand pounds. Well, I am not bothered about that, as I have my house paid for. And I've got good things down in Dublin. A fella arranged them for me, told me they were the last word. Sounds a posh address as well. Here, hang on a second, let me see, see if I can find where that address is. Oh yes, here it is. Fatima Mansions. What is that like? It sounds very posh. Oh, <laughs> Fatima Mansions, yeah. Oh, yes. That'll suit you down to the ground, Dr. Oh, Paisley, lovely. down to the ground. Lovely. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> is there a Kylemore around here? I'm not hungry, I could eat the fucking poultice of a child's head. Well, well, there is actually, you just walk the end of the avenue here, turn yes. left, straight across the track, yes. like you can't miss it, straight in the corner, right, follow right, windows. Right, yeah, it'd be lovely. Hey, Margaret, Margaret, pass up a few of them bananas. Oh, that was... You see who that was I was talking to? Tell you they all come down here. Tony, Gregory, the lot of them. Yeah. Ah, he's gorgeous, isn't he, Tony? I love when Tony comes down. But them two, I'm telling you, were famous, Margaret, famous. Oh, yes, it's great to be back in the digs again, Mervyn. Tell you what, they're a bit small, though. Good sick you couldn't even get a hard on in here. Anyway, I think I'll give this. Boy, a ring here. Thank you for calling today, FM. I'm sorry there's nobody here to take your call. Leave a message. Thank you. Uh, this is a message for Duffy. Hey, sausage! You better give Willie McRae's new song a plug, or else you'll be in trouble the next time you come up the north. <laughs> Not that we want to see you, mind you. But you better play it anyway, or we'll ask the Parades Commission to have a march down your street. So there you have it, Big Doc. Well, this is a wee rap song for all you southerners down in dirty Dublin. I hope you like it. I hope you like that wee chain down the back. Because I do. Yeah, like that. When I get up in the morning, I thank the Lord and tell him how glad he made me a proud. I thank him that he didn't grow up in the south, for it wasn't for Brussels they'd be living hand to mouth. That's a rap. 
It's a rap. It's a rap. I will leave. One, two, three. problems we have in the north, at least no one's asking what their house is worth. We don't pay the prices that you have done, they'll be looking at fortunes of living valley mum. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap. A willy rap. When I get up in the morning, it's good to see. Cables run the pension and we can't get RTE. We don't have to sit through hours of river dance and we don't have a home in the south of France. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap. A willy rap. Of all the things I thank the Lord in my prayers, I don't qualify for telecom shares. It's a rap. It's a rap. All right, Willie, I'm saying, fuck a rap it up. Don't sing us a lot of shite. That's a lot of cut that you All right, I just have a... One more phone call to make here. Yes, that number Bertie gave me. Hello, you've reached the offices of the Progressive Democrats. Sorry we can't take your call right now. If you'd like to leave a message, we'll call you as soon as possible. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello. Uh, this is a message for Mary Harney. Ian Paisley here. I was just wondering uh, if by any chance uh, you and my son Ian Jr., Fancy meeting up for a bit of a chat to see how you might get on. He's snapping on a bit, as you know, and I would like to see him settle down uh, with somebody who was familiar uh, with the rough and tumble of political life. So I thought you might be uh, uh, interested. Obviously, the fact that you're a fiend uh, is a major problem. But I can see a way around that. You could undergo a conversion course to free Presbyterianism and come here uh, and live in the North. Things have settled down a lot, you know that. Uh, and you'd have absolutely no trouble buying your own house up here. And another good thing, you could join a party that already had some seats. It would be a good change for you. Anyway, let me know what you think and get back to me as soon as you possibly can. Thanks. Oh, show me at the door, Dr. Phil. Well, I went fucking answer it, for goodness sake. Oh, uh, it's Cathal Daly. All right, what the hell does he want here? Hello, Dr. Pacey. I, I, I knew you were down here, and, and I, I thought you wouldn't mind me coming in and speaking to you. What? What the hell did you know I was here? Well, I asked someone told me in the corridors that you were here staying in this room, and I hope you don't mind me coming down and, and, and having a word with you. Well, what the fuck is it? What do you want? Well, I want to, first and foremost, uh, start by telling you a little Bible story, Dr. Pacey. I hope you don't mind. All right, go ahead. Well, one day Jesus came across a crowd of women throwing stones. No, he wasn't in Ballymun. They were throwing stones at a young woman, so he went over to them, uh, a bit like Jerry Adams, coming down the rioters in internment anniversary day, and asked them, what were they up to? We're stoning this whore, Mary Magdalene, to death, the woman said. So Jesus says, fair enough, but let any one of you who is without sin cast the first stone. Immediately, this wee woman lugs over a big breeze block and says, This'll sort you out, you old bitch, and drops it on Mary Magdalene's head. So Jesus goes over to her and says, You know, Mother, sometimes you really piss me off. I suppose the only people who were laughing then were, were, were the Catholics. I take it you, you prods don't know that Mary was born without an original sin. Well, you will soon learn. Uh, when Martin McGuinness is Minister of Education. Well, I also have to say that one woman who is definitely a sinner is that Sinead O'Connor, or Mother Bernadette Mary. Well, there's something about Bernadette Mary that annoys my whole. It took me seven years of study to become a priest, and, 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 and she gives uh, a bishop a hundred grand and pays uh, for his hernia operation, and gets ordained straight off. A hernia operation, I suppose that's a case of in God we trust. Anyway, before I, 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 I became a, a qualified priest, I, I had to learn how to do weddings, funerals, and hear confessions. I was taught how, how to give five Hail Marys for a bit of thieving, ten Our Fathers for masturbation. 
But one day I heard this boy confess an awful sin. So I asked the parish priest for advice. I said, Father, what do you give a young boy who sins with his mouth? And he replied, I don't know about you, but I usually give him ten pounds and a bag of raspberry ruffles. Oh, fuck, there's my phone, Dr. Pace. Oh, yes, oh, probably another fucking altar boy, is it? Oh, hold on a second. Oh, I think it just seems to have rung off here. But anyway, you know, Dr. Pacey, one of the first confessions ever I heard was in, in County Meath. This farmer comes into the confession and he told me that he liked to hump pigs. So I, 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 I took a deep breath and asked him whether he humped male or female pigs. Female, he, of course, replied. Uh, what do you think I am, a fucking pervert? But anyway, I can tell you that, uh, unlike uh, Bishop Buckley, uh, I have never officiated a mixed marriage. You know, one young Catholic man once told me that he was considering getting married to a Protestant. So I told him that I was worried that, uh, that if he did so, uh, he would suffer terrible repercussions. What do you mean, Father, he says. Are you worried that my family will be uh, intimidated by the paramilitaries? Or will we be targeted? I says, no, son. I told him that that bastard Graham Reed might write a play about you. Speaking of weddings, did you see the royal wedding in June? I was a bit worried that Prince Edward's ring was a bit loose. Reminded me of my favourite altar boy. All right, come on, that's disgusting. There's no need for that. You know, Dr. Paisley, I have to also say that uh, I was at a wedding recently and the bride was showing me her wedding presents. Unfortunately, the hinge on her microwave door had come loose. So I said, don't worry, I can give you a screw for that microwave. But she replied, no thanks, Father. But I'll give you one of those toasters for a blowjob. Of course, nowadays, people will believe any scandal about the Catholic Church. Years ago, it was different. My aunt told me that she used to live opposite a whorehouse. One night, she had her best friend around for tea. As they were drinking their cup of Lipton's finest, my aunt looked out the window and saw a Presbyterian minister going into the whorehouse. Her friend says, look at that dirty old Presbyterian, a filthy old whore chaser. Ten minutes later, a Church of Ireland bishop arrives. My aunt's mate looks and says, look at him. Even the proddy bishops are at it as well. Ten minutes later, the parish priest arrives at the door of the brothel. Holy Mary, Mother of God, says my aunt. There must be someone sick in there. But before I go, Dr. Pace, I also have to say that I am delighted that you have come down to Dublin and that you're trying to readdress yourself and, and you're trying to be friendly with the, the neighbours. These are neighbours, of course, in the south, and we want you to reach that. All right, all right, for fuck's sake, I get that message. All right. Thanks anyway, Catherine, for coming in and put us a fucking sleep. Right, there's your Vaseline. Away you go, beat it. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank goodness I got a seat. Right, Brian, I think it's about time I got a drink. And away and get us a, a drink of whatever the Pope drinks. Uh, I take it that's uh, a better orange then, in? None of your nonsense, I'll slap your face. Just get me whatever the Pope drinks and get it down here immediately and fucking die of thirst. There you are, in. What the fuck is that? That's a uh, green chartreuse. Green what? I'm not drinking that fucking pippy shite. What is that? Hold on, I have a sip of this, actually. It might be all right. Oh, yes. Very nice indeed. I like that. That is a liqueur, I believe it. I know what sort of liqueur I would like. But I better not say that. What the fuck do you want? Yeah, Get away from my table. Well, that's all right. Thank you. Oh, yes. I don't know about you, Marva, but I'll tell you something. That liqueur was as strong as Jerry Adams' breath. How the fuck your man of holiness, the Pope, can drink gallons of that and still get out of his bed in the morning is beyond me. It must be the fucking altar boy. You must be great. But anyway, I was going to say to you, Marva, I think it's time that I made up 
of my Catholic friends and the good old Republic because I love the Republic. I love the people of the South. Chucky our land up the row. Oh, shite. You know, Burma. I've been very hard on the people in the Republic. But they're my fucking friends. I love my friends in the South. But you know something? I feel like getting up and doing a wee stage act. I hope you're ready for this, Mervyn. I don't think I am, Dr. Piz. I think it's going to be a well, fucking too bad. You're going to have to listen to it, that shit. Give me that, my dear. I don't know why you're all worn and shite. I've come down here to share in your culture. Christ knows why. Uh, uh, it's all I've seen is a bunch of friggin' ignoramuses whose uh, culture and pursuits seem to mean a, a trip between the pub and the boogies. What happened to the island of saints and scholars? She just can't even pass Irish in schools these days. Goodness sake. A far cry from the days of Connolly and Pierce. In fact, I was reading the proclamation last night, and I thought it was time to update it for this present generation. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and the dead generations, from which she receives her old tradition of backhanders and begrudgery, Ireland through us summons her children to the flag and strikes for 2% above the new partnership agreement. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary army of Vienna foil spin doctors and through her open construction and building organization backdoor developments, having patiently uh, perfected her discipline of sending a few quid to the headquarters and keeping the rest for the constituents, having resolutely waited uh, for the right moment to reveal details of offshore accounts to the flood inquiry, she now seizes that moment, and supported by her children in the bar Lighter, and by gallant allies down the country, but relying in the first on her own cuteness, she strikes in full confidence of a Labour court hearing. <laughs> we declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland, and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign gold coins stored in the Isle of Man. The long usurpation of that right by a succession of tribunals has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of incriminating evidence. In every generation, cute hoors have asserted their right to a few backhanders. Six times in the past 300 years, EEC grants have been paid for the same set-aside land. Standing on that fundamental right of Brussels money, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as up for auction, with the guide price of 15,000 big ones for every day. And we pledge our bank accounts and the lives of our spin doctors to the cause. Vienna Foyle is entitled to and hereby claims the first preference vote of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, with the exception of the travellers and them feckin' Romanians uh, on O'Connell Street Bridge, <laughs> and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation in the back corridors of Brussels and cherishing all the children particularly of priests and bishops, but excluding those from halting sites and industrial schools. Until our Isle of Man deposits have been brought to the opportune moment for the establishment of a new retail development park in Glen O'Dowds, the Fianna Fáil Progressive Democrat Coalition will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people and especially anyone with a holiday home in the south of France. <laughs> we place the cause of the coalition government under the protection of Jackie Healy Ray, whose blessings we invoke upon our schemes and pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or inward investment in Fenagale strongholds. And by the way, 
we're happy to announce the creation of 2,000 jobs in Kerry. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must by its valour and discipline and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves to the common good, find the money they borrowed to pay for their telecom shares. <laughs> well, folks, I would also like to pay a tribute to a friend of mine from the rough and tough old days of politics, a man whom a lot of people have recently taken to revile, but he is a man who I have reviled well before that. He is, of course, my old sparring partner, Charlie Hockey. People say Charlie took money from Ben Dunn. Well, he's a lucky man he took the cash instead of having him build you an extension like Laurie did. Now, he has a 30-foot refrigerator in his kitchen, a sign for the club cards in the garden. Oh, yes, Ben there done that got the T-shirt. One pound's 99. Anyway, here's a wee song for you, Charlie, just to cheer you up. All right, what do you like in them keyboards, sir, lad? Get them behind them hair rays and let's have a tune. Oh, yes, the Black Velvet Band, especially for Charlie. The singing's crap, but let me tell you something. So is the preacher. In my neat little home call could see me. Sure's many a time I had fun. There was always a welcome for visitors, especially if they were called on. But a sad misfortune came over me, which caused Harry to dig the dirt. Cause I shafted my friends and companions for the sake of a nice handmade shirt. Her eyes, they shone like a viper. Her neck it was made out of brass, and after her little appearance, they all think Charlie's an ass. As I was curled up in my armchair, sipping me heart from a can, and the big fella he walked in and slipped a check into me hand. Her eyes they shone like a viper, her neck it was made out of brass. And after her little appearance, they all think Charlie's an ass. Before the judge and the jury, someday I will have to appear. Because of my offshore accounts, and the dodgy expenses each year. Her eyes, they shone like a viper. Her neck, it was made out of brass. And after her little appearance, they all think Charlie's an ass. Well, Charlie, that's a special little song for you. And don't worry about it if you get a couple of years and might do it. You'll be out in no time at all under the Good Friday Agreement. I hope you enjoyed it, son. Chucky, our lad. Eileen! Eileen! Jesus Christ! Eileen! Oh, I've had a nightmare, Jesus. Or was it dreaming? I didn't have a stream and I was down in the south, Jesus Christ. Come on in, Mervyn, Mervyn. Yes, I thought I was having a nightmare there. Well, Mervyn, is there any messages? Well, Dr. Pizzi, there's a couple of messages from your constituency office. Uh, oh, and by the way, there's a message from uh, someone by the name of Mary Harney. Holy shit.